today's Visual Basic Scripting. I want to give a big shout out to Dave out there. Thank you, Dave. Dave sent me in a sample and said, what the heck does this do? Can you pull it apart? Tell me what it does. Don't care if it's a virus. Don't care if it's not a virus. I just want to know what it does. So thanks, Dave. And anyone else that has the same idea, yeah, I'll pull it apart. I'll have a look. I'll have a dig. Doesn't matter what it is. Send it in. Thank you very much. So here we have the VBS script open up in Notepad. You'll notice it's uh, fairly hard to read, deliberately done so that you can't pick up on what the text is. I can see some variables being set. I can see the WScript hosting being requested. And I can see that it's going to assign some chars and other variables to something. And then at the very end here, depending on what the answer is from the uh, formula, it's going to spit out some kind of result. I can also see that they've tried to sign this. That's an interesting tactic. They're trying to make this script look like it's a trusted script. Here's your end signature block, and of course at the beginning there, was the beginning for the signing. Which is pretty cool. I've not seen anyone try to do that before. Alrighty, so we can't read it like this. Um, it's pretty much all gobbledygook. So, you can run through PowerShell and you can find out from the signature or from the signing if it's a real signature block or not. In this case, I tried that and it failed. It said this has uh, got something wrong with it. I don't doubt it. It's malware. Malware is never written perfectly. But there's the command anyway. PowerShell get authentic, authentic code signature. Okay. So I'm going to tidy this VBS script up a little bit. I'm going to remove that signature. I don't need it. I'm going to make sure it doesn't assign that variable because I don't want it to run anything and do anything it shouldn't do. And then I'm going to make this code, all this gobbledygook stuff, pop out into a message box or something like that. Now, one of the other things I can do is I'm actually going to put some code in here that makes it pop out into Notepad. That way, of course, I can cut and paste a bit easier later. So what I've done is I've done a W shell run into Notepad. I'm then going to activate Notepad, and then I'm going to send keys Control V to cut and paste anything I put into memory. So that piece of code there, which I'll put up for you later, allows me to cut and paste this out into something. So of course, I can pull the code apart later. So let's run this and see what happens. So we've now run it and look what we've got now. This is even harder to read. Wow, look at this information. So we can see that again, it's trying to run something in memory. Can't quite read it because it's all gobbledygook. Because of the way I ran that notepad command, it actually pasted the code that it spat out back into the same notepad window. So now that I've got that code, I'm gonna stick that into a VBS file and I'm gonna run that because I'm only going to have that message box out to the screen. So here I am putting it into another notepad file. I've put a message box in front of it. So I can spittle this out to see what it actually does. So nice and safe. I don't think that's going to run any code. It looks like it's only going to message box the answer of this. And here we have it. So what we have is it goes up and looks at a path of a URL. Um, it then checks to see if it exists. It then goes up and down as a, a, a pr.exe file, puts it into your temp directory from a website. And there is the PHP file listed and everything else that it converts into that exe file. So this is obviously a downloader and it's downloading some sort of executable to my machine. So now I have the executable, I'm going to run it up through VirusTotal and see what I've got. Before I do that, let's just find out if there's any unusual information on the exe file. Hmm, iron run.exe, that's its real name. Whatever that gobbledygook is, that's its real name. And the file description is final voice. Very interesting. 
So if we go first to hybrid analysis, we load up the executable tool, and we also load it up to virus total at the same time, so we can find out a little bit more about this executable and what it does. Now, as you can see, it's been detected by a number of antivirus products, some of the more unusual products, although Microsoft is in there as well. Um, not much information about it, it's just matching heuristics at the moment. So let's see if there's any other information. File detail. Same thing I determined. The name and the actual name of the product is different to the executable name. Someone's renamed it to try and hide it. As we scroll down though, we can see the different DLL it imports and uses. And we can see the different subroutines that it actually calls up and what it does. As we scroll down further, we can see more details about the executable. We can see the sort of char set it uses, so we can work out what country it may have come from. Um, we can all get all kinds of information about it. Uh, again, there's more information. The more you dig around in virus total, the more you can find. And at the moment, it looks like there's no comments, no votes, no nothing, so no one knows about it. over to hybrid analysis let's see a bit more about what it does yep it's malicious we knew that so let's go down to this last scan somebody else has already done one for us so let's have a look at that last scan shall we click on that and away we go Over here, we can see that it writes data to a remote process. Um, it actually captures remote desktop keystrokes. So this thing looks a bit of like a, a bit of a keylogger, actually. Um, if you dig that right down through all this, and you have a look at all the IP addresses and the DLLs and registry keys and things like that, you'll get a much better idea of what this does. And you can see that it's using the MITRE ATT&CK exploit and that contacts a uh, whole bunch of different hosts out on the internet you can see it tries to dig around and get all sorts of machine information most viruses do this anyway it seems to be very much rdp related there's a lot of rdp stuff in here so i'm thinking this thing sets up a remote desktop connection to your machine probably without you knowing i would say <clears throat> And it checks what rights you've got and checks what uh, APIs are in place and uh, sets up. Ooh, look at this. Deletes some files. So it downloads that executable. Must run it. And then it deletes it. And tries to cover its backside. Look at all those IP addresses it contacts. Probably announces, hey, I'm over here. You can come and hack me now. Hmm, and drop some files as well. Gee whiz. Lots of stuff going on there. And as you scroll down, you can also get screenshots, if there are any. In this case, it looks like there isn't. It looks like it doesn't do very much with the desktop, doesn't interact. But it does obviously touch run DLL 32. And look at all that network activity. So it's using HTTPS to do something. And it's going all across the world as you'd expect and here's all the strings in the executable and any files that it extracts out on the way so there we go so hybrid analysis has given us a really big dig into that and uh, i've waited a few days now so i'm going to upload that executable again and see if i can find out what it's called and what it actually does you have any tips for me you got something you like pulled apart Maybe you don't like my style. Drop a comment. Ring the bell. See the next video. Or subscribe. Thanks. Bye.